Welcome to the Esto James channel. I'm Esto James and today I'm going to show you how to paint this awesome stenciled summertime painting. Say that three times fast. Okay, let's talk about what you're going to need to make this painting happen. First and foremost, you're going to need a canvas. Pretty straightforward. You can use canvas board or anything else. Really up to you, whatever you want to paint on. This one I'm using is a just a white canvas, 16 by 20 inches. Now the next thing you'll need is a piece of chalk. You're going to have some paint brushes. I always have a load of paint brushes around, but for this one, you can do it with as little as two or three. The ones I am going to use for this one are a large flat brush. This will help us with our background. You'll have a small flat brush, which is just like the large one, just smaller. And then pick a detail brush that you want to work just to get in for the smaller areas. You should be able to do this entire painting with just those brushes. Um, you're also going to need a cup of water. Don't forget to go with your paint palette. We will be putting paint on here. You can use something as simple as a paper plate and just throw it away when you're done. I like to use these guys though, because even though we have to wash them, they usually come with a lid. And if you have a lid, you can put that on there, walk away from your painting and your paint won't dry out. Um, unless you're using oils. We are not using oils. We will be using acrylic paints. Uh, more specifically, I'm using Craftsmart paints. I'm using a big variety set. If you don't have any of these supplies, please check the Amazon link in the description below and we will be, you'll be able to order all the supplies I'm using, including some neon orange paint. Let's talk about the colors since I got a little ahead of myself, but we will be using, of course, white and black. That is in most of the paintings we ever use. We have yellow and orange. Now I'm going to be using this neon orange in place of regular orange. Use what you have, but if you'd like to try the neon orange and don't have it, again, check the link listed below. You can get some. It's really cool as you're about to see. And then I'm using mint and purple. Now mint is just a bright green. If you find a green of any kind, it will work well. And purple, same thing. It's just a brighter purple that I'm gonna be using. This is more like a lavender color. But those are all you'll need to get started. Of course, you'll need a couple of towels just in case you get messy like I do. And that's about it, so let's just jump in. All right, so as we get into this, the first thing we need to do is lay down some water. I grabbed the big flat round, or not round, I grabbed the big flat brush and started just dipping it in my water here. And as I spread this, I'm just gonna put a bunch of gobs of water all over this. Now, I don't want this to be running with water when we're done. What we really want is just to have a very nice thin film of water over the entire canvas. So I put a couple of drops of water on there and now I'm spreading it out. Um, if you're following along at home with me, then please just make sure before you start that you don't have any puddles of water on here. That's not what we're looking for. Um, if you look to the side at a different angle, um, down at your canvas, you'll see that the light glares. It'll show you where all the water has um, been spread out on your canvas. It doesn't need to be exactly perfect, but the better you can get to cover up all of the areas, um, it's gonna really serve you well. Now you're also gonna see I'm using a technique where it looks like I'm sweeping a floor, and that's just, I found the most efficient way to spread this, not only water, but paint, as you'll see in the future here, um, to get it set. So now that we have the thin thing of wire, water, I'm gonna take just yellow and cover this whole canvas with yellow. Um, I don't just sit here and pick up and do lines. I like to actually do X's. You can do O's or just shapes. What I'm doing is taking big clumps of, of this paint and I'm just putting it in different sections all over my canvas here. And the reason I'm doing that is because once I start spreading it all around, it already is kind of evenly placed as I'm putting it on there and I won't have to keep coming back and grabbing more as I spread it out. So there we go, well, I got all my paint already spread out there. And now as I go back and forth and spread this paint, it'll pick up new paint as I go along with it. It's, it works really, really well. Uh, a lot of people are scared to use a lot of paint. They only just kind of dab in the edge of their paint just a little bit and try to spread and make that last as long as possible. 
In this case, don't do that. Just put a lot of paint on here. We do not want to see this white canvas coming back through our background. And yellow, you can see through yellow pretty easily. So this doesn't cover up too much space just by itself. So what you're gonna do is use, don't be scared, use a good amount of paint. Just make sure that it covers everything that you're working on. And then I'm using that same brushing technique. You see I'm going back and forth, back and forth. If any of you grew up with a parent who made you do chores, you probably know how to sweep. And that's kind of what I relate this to. Uh, it's a lot more fun than sweeping, <laughs> thank God. But if you do that same kind of motion, like you're sweeping up dirt, you're gonna push this paint around and pull this paint around um, so it's nice and even, and that's what we're looking for. And of course, I gotta paint my edges. I am OCD with this stuff. Uh, I do hang up most of my paintings around the house. I don't frame them all. So when I look at them, I wanna look at them and know I did a good job. And part of that for me is painting the, the sides or the edges. So up to you if you want to do it or not. Now onto some white. You do have some white paint here. What we're going to do is just lighten up the bottom third of this canvas. So about a third of the way down, we're going to just spread some of this white paint. And I'll kind of come back and grab just a little bit more. Um, you can do the same kind of technique. You can put a couple blobs of white paint down there too. It will help you there. Uh, the end goal with this is just to brighten up this yellow at the bottom so that we do get that sunset effect. So brighter bottom is what we're looking for. Now once you uh, feel you've gotten this white and blended in, we're gonna take this neon orange or a bright orange, whichever one you have. I'm using the neon. And we're gonna just spread this over, I'd say the top half of this painting. Um, I'm doing this fast because I want this wet yellow that we laid down to still be a little bit wet or at least enough so that if we added a little bit of water to it that it'll start blending um, in with that, that yellow background. That's what we want here. This is why we want it wet. We want our paint to go on smooth, nice and easy, and we want it to blend with the yellow that's already there. You're gonna find too that sometimes this doesn't blend perfectly, and that actually is gonna work into your advantage. We do want kind of a hazy look. Maybe it even looks like there's some thin cloud or atmosphere back there. So if it doesn't fully blend and it doesn't look perfect, that's okay. That's actually gonna add to, I think, a little bit of characteristic to your sunset. I'll remind you, I am going to be going very fast just because I want to keep this video moving. If you're painting along with me, please don't be scared to pause it or um, rewind or click to hear my voice. That's the beauty of watching these videos. You get to control this lesson as much as you want. You might have also noticed at the bottom here, we have a yellow bar that ticks down until we get to the next section. So if you do want to pause it, don't be scared to pause it, or at least you know exactly where to pause it before we start the next step. Now, if you're already ahead of me and you're ready to go, our next step is we are going to grab that chalk. This is going to help us immensely with getting this um, painting or this picture together. So why chalk? A lot of people ask me, what does the chalk do? Well, this allows us to draw our painting in here without doing any of the actual paint. Then if you don't like what you've drawn, you can always go back and erase the chalk before you start adding paint. So with this first image though, we're making a tree branch. I am left-handed, so you might not follow exactly the way that I'm doing this, but there is a good rule of thumb when you're drawing in a tree branch is whichever direction you're making this face, uh, whatever the end of the branch is should always be thinner than uh, the rest of the branch. So as we draw these chalk lines in, I wanna make sure for this particular one, the further it goes left, then the, the thicker it goes. Or another way to say it is the farther it goes right or towards the end of the branch, it'll be a lot thinner. 
So if you have a gradual line like that, no matter what shape you choose to draw these branches in, you're going to do just fine if you stick to that principle. Thin on the end and then thicker as it gets towards the trunk or towards the base of the tree or to the next branch even. All right, we're gonna draw our beehive in here. Now there's a simple way we can do this is I draw a T or uh, an X, however you wanna see it, across a T. This will help me draw in this oval shape. So if I connect my points from this cross, boom, bam, this one kinda looks like an acorn, but uh, that's, that's kinda what I, I like this beehive shape to be. And then we're gonna do our lines. Now I'm not gonna go straight. I'm gonna bend them a little bit, make them kinda like smiley faces. That almost looks like a basketball. <clears throat> But we are not drawing a basketball here, so I'm just drawing in kind of these slightly curved lines. Think of them as smiley faces all the way down. And then I'm gonna top off the edges here and I'm gonna curve them out just a little bit from each line segment. Now, this is going to be a stencil style painting, so I'm gonna just make it look like I stenciled this in, even though I'm painting it in. So to make it look like a stencil, I gotta leave these gaps. So I'm leaving these bigger chalk marks here as kind of guidelines or construction lines for me is not to paint over those. Because we're gonna come back and we're gonna do a lot of black on top of this. And uh, we wanna make sure that there's some spacing. Uh, I didn't do it right now. Uh, I forgot to put in the, the hole for the bees to enter. So if you didn't do that, didn't put a hole there, I'm gonna show you how to do that when I'm painting in the, the darker stuff, but we're gonna put a bee hole in there too. Now with the flowers, you could do leaves or panels just like that, but I found it's easier if you do a big circle on top of that, and then we make kind of little lines next to the little circle. And these can be construction lines to go out and make our petals. Some people struggle with these shapes, and even with doing this, you can. There's no right or wrong, but I found it's easier to just make a big circle over that little circle. And then we'll draw a little, little lines all the way around that circle. I do about five of them. And then extend those lines out to your big circle, and then boom, you have it already set in. You got your, your petals ready to go. Simple and easy. This only works because the stencil effect, but you'll see once we start painting it. And of course, we got to do our little branches for our leaves to stick out. What I'm doing is just a line, and at the end of that line, going upward at least, I'll do a little smiley face at the end. I connect that, that last little line and make a smiley face there, and then boom, what do you know? We got little leaves. Now let's do a bee. So with the bee, these are, again, stencil shapes. This is going to be very easy. I do an oval do a circle for the head. I'll do some little wings. And let's do another butterfly, or excuse me, another bumblebee up here. We'll do same thing, an oval. We'll do some wings. We got a little head on top of there. Oh, and let's add the antenna. Antennae? Antenna. Whatever it is, you know, the little antler thingies. Let's put some paint in. So we're gonna fill all of this in now like it's a coloring book. We're gonna take some black paint and we are just going to fill this in. I like to go the same direction every time. The biggest thing that I could tell you guys about filling this in or any kind of painting similar to this is we want nice, long, smooth lines. Now, if you're using the paints that I had highlighted at the beginning, uh, these are gonna work really well without adding water because they're already kind of liquidy. And when you fill up your paintbrush, that paint should come off very easily. See, as I, long, as I do these long strokes, most of the paint lasts. You, you see towards the end of that last stroke, it, it will fade out a little bit and you might have to grab some more paint. But if you go back and get paint every single time, it's gonna fill in no problem. What I want you to avoid doing on these paintings though are doing little jagged strokes where you try to fill up one line with multiple strokes like that. Like one, 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 one. You don't wanna do that. Now I'm doing it because I'm filling in the branch. But when you do these outlines, you wanna get in the habit of doing just long, straight, smooth lines with one stroke. You don't wanna do anything more than that. And you're gonna get these nice smooth lines if you can get that technique down. I'm gonna use the same technique for filling in the rest of the, the area here. But this is a good way to practice as well on something like a beginner painting just like this. 
because um, this, this technique will help you with, with so many other things in the art world. So I'm just filling this in, but you can even use this filling time to practice those long, smooth strokes. You just don't want to pick, do short strokes, pick up the brush, do another short stroke, pick up the brush. You're never gonna get a smooth, straight line, and it's gonna kinda always look funky to you. So the best thing to do is do that. Now, if you're not using these craft marts, these craft smarts paints that I've recommended, another good thing you can do, even with the beginner paints, is take a little bit of water, dip your brush in water, and then mix some of that water into the paint itself. Make it so it's a little bit more liquidy. Uh, a good rule of thumb is probably like one part water, two part paint, and it'll act more like an ink in that stage. And then so the same thing when you come in here and you're filling in your lines, if you do just really nice and long strokes, that paint will come off so easily and then you can kind of fill in the outline first just like that and then and then you can go back and do the strokes and, and to fill in the extra area now while we're doing this beehive I want to make sure that you know it's important we are doing this stencil effect so we don't want to fill in that chalk area I'm gonna fill it in right here just a little bit because we all make mistakes right there we go so I'm gonna do that and then when I bring this other stroke down, I go, oh no, I covered up too much of my chalk. I needed that to be empty space. That's okay, that's okay, because these are construction lines. That's exactly why we use the chalk. We can come back and erase them later. The paint will actually erase it away as well. But I need to remember just to keep that spacing in between those lines. So when I do the second stroke here, you're gonna see that I don't go to the chalk line I just make sure there's enough space in between our little rows of beehive here. And uh, I just want to make sure my, my paintbrush doesn't run out of paint. So I'm a little OCD, I want straight edges. I might overlap a few of these edges just by tinkering with it. <laughs> but it's okay, this is painting, it's fun, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not getting graded on this unless somebody secretly watching is grading me on this. This, at the end of the day, should be relaxing and hopefully you're learning some cool tricks and tips that will help you with this painting and future paintings. So here we go. I forgot to add that hole earlier, so let's take that chalk in. We're gonna fill in this beehive hole. Now since it's chalk, I want that to be the negative space. It's just a reminder, again, for me not to fill in that space. So I'm gonna continue to try using these longer strokes, fill in my beehive or these black areas and I'm still practicing using those longer strokes. And we don't want to cover up this beehive hole. Um, you could easily make this painting with stencils if you wanted. Some people really do enjoy making stencil art, and if so, I hope you use this as, as a template someday. That'd be really cool. But what we're doing is just kind of making a fun one, and I do like this stencil idea. I realized here I did do chalk for the very end of it. That was just so I knew that the end was there. I'm gonna go ahead and cover that up anyway, even though there was chalk there. Just because we gotta end this somehow. We can't have that be empty space at the very end, at least in my eyes. If that's what you wanna do, that's what you wanna do. But I wanna see the bottom of that. <laughs> that looks actually really cool. I think we did a good job. Let's move on to the flowers. So I'm using the same principle here with the flowers. I'm gonna fill in the circles first. Um, I'm gonna to continue to use this flat little brush that, we're, we, I've, that I started out with. I did tell you in the um, supplies area that you can use a, a smaller detail brush, and that's absolutely true. And this would be a good time to use it if you're comfortable with it, or if you're not comfortable with this one. Um, I like this one though because I can still make these nice smooth straight lines and these flat brushes really help with that if you use them at an angle there. 
So I'm just filling that in. But if you wanna grab your detail brush, you can do it too. It's just harder to make straight, flat lines. Um, if you have a really small, flat, flat brush, that'd be really handy at this point. But use whatever's comfortable for you. And as I'm filling these in, like I said, just keep practicing using those smooth lines. It's not going to be perfect, and that's okay. But this is a great painting to practice this, this particular technique. There we go, we got our first flower. Let's go ahead and just move on up to the second flower. Let's keep it consistent. As I put that in there, I'm just filling in my chalk lines. Uh, I didn't erase anything yet. So if you're looking at a big pinwheel, um, paint in the thicker lines, not the thinner lines. Um, I've done that in the past, is misread the way I've stenciled this out and filled in the wrong area. So just make sure you're filling in the right area, the petals that you want. Um, don't fill in the, the skinnier areas that separate it. Now, if you don't like the stencil effect, you can also go ahead and put everything in there and connect everything, but I think it kind of loses some of what this painting has to offer. So if you can, do your best to keep it as a stencil effect, because when we come back and add little colorful details, um, these these negative space areas is what's going to give us dimension or what we're looking at and it really just pulls everything together once we add the highlights. You'll also notice that all of these petals that I've done, they're not perfectly even and that's okay too. It actually adds to it because we might be looking, it adds perspective so it could help there too. Now as we do these flower stems, it's the same principle. You'll notice that I'm doing long, straight lines. And I don't have a perfect hand. I've been doing this for a while. You might not either, so take your time doing it. The trick to this is making sure you have enough paint on your paintbrush. As you can see in this last one, I didn't go back and get more paint. I kept doing it. So now I'm gonna try to fill this area in. But if you want a very nice, crisp, smooth line, Make sure you have a little bit of water in that paint and make sure your paintbrush is filled up. And then we come back through and we do these leaves and same thing, just smooth strokes, one brush stroke, not many, many brush strokes. And this will make you have such a clean painting. Boom, there we go. I think we're good on that. Let's go ahead and do the bees and then we'll add some color a little bit later. So same thing, I kind of twist this in my hand. I, I twist it in my within my fingers to get those circles, but do whatever makes you comfortable to fill it in. Now let's put some little bee hatch here so we get kind of that yellow black stripe effect. I'm just gonna do a lot of little lines and then let, let's add a stinger for fun. And now this same thing, I'm gonna turn this in my hand. I'm gonna roll it between my fingers as I make this bee line but I'm gonna do the same thing and try my best to keep it as smooth strokes. And some antennae. Give it a little dots at the top, why not? There we go, we got a bumblebee. Now this, ooh, this one is interfering with my branch here. So let me grab my, my uh, washcloth, my paper towel, whatever it is that you're using, and we're gonna erase this chalk. There we go, and uh, okay, so the end of my washcloth there screwed up that area right there. Some of it got smushed around my black. Um, we're gonna have to try to figure out how to fix that. Let me just draw in a B real fast. Just so he's not so close to the branch there. There we go. All right, let me see if I can wipe away this stuff a little later. I'm gonna fill in the B since we got them. So same same thing, oval, little round head. We got some wings that we're gonna do some, some of the hatching for his butt or his tail, or whatever they're called. The, uh, all right, so. Got my fun antlers, antenna, 
not antlers. Sound effects always help. Put in his wings here. One nice stroke. Oh, I got all the way around. If you can get all the way around, get all the way around. If you can't, try to meet somewhere in the middle. But you see how much cleaner those lines look that way. All right, now that we got our all our black in, let's see if I can wipe away some of this black smudginess that I got on here. If ever you're gonna wipe away stuff, guys, I, I screwed up and didn't think of it myself. Make sure your painting's dry before you wipe away anything. And this is not coming off. Yep, okay, so let's get creative. Let's, let's make it work with our painting. It's not ruined. You know how Bob Ross always said, happy accidents, right? No mistakes, happy accidents. So what, we could turn this into like a branch. And then uh, maybe this branch has some leaves or leftover leaves still on it. Maybe some berries or something, I don't know. Add another little twig area here. Yeah, see there, now you don't even notice. You had no idea that Isto James made, mis made a mi mistake. He definitely makes mistakes with words, but not his paintings. And all right, so here's another good tip that I'm not following myself is, once you put it in there, let it be how it is. Sometimes when you overwork these, you end up making more problems for yourself than is if you just left it alone. So I'm gonna leave it as is for now and we're going to start filling in some color. So the first color that I'm gonna use, well, we do have purple, we have the orange, we have greens and all that stuff. Well, I picked this color palette for a reason. These colors are really nice, bright, secondary colors. So you should have some purple with you. Um, I'm using this lavender one. I want it to be bright, I want it to be pastel and fun. So I'm loading up my brush with some, some purple here and we're gonna do this purple in all of the spots that are black on the tree and the beehive and I think the flower. Now as we lay this purple down, we don't wanna take over all of our black that we just did and we don't wanna make new lines either. We just wanna make some highlights. So on the branch, I'm gonna to stick to just the top side of each of my main branches here. Now I'm gonna go fill it in because as you know, I have a little bit of that OCD. It needs to be a little bit more connected for me. So use whatever purple you like here. This is a great, because it kind of has like a shadow color to it. It will mix with that black that you laid down a little bit as well, which could play in your favor. We're thinking of this as like highlights and shadows, and it's just giving a little bit of depth, or a little bit of dimension to what we're seeing here. It's just kind of a fun style that I started doing. Now the beehive, again, since this is a highlight or a shadowing that we're working with, we only wanna do part of this. We don't wanna to get too carried away with this uh, highlighting. So I'm gonna do the back edges on just the right side, only on the right side of the beehive. Um, if you wanna do just the left hand side as well, you can do that, just don't get carried away and do all of it. So we're gonna fill in this, this one side of our beehive with this purple color. And I'm not gonna go too far in either. I am gonna fill in some of these, these black gaps where the purple is. Just fill them in a little bit more. But that's all we're going for. We just want to have these cool little highlights popping out. pretty good. Uh, let's move on. I'm going to do this to the flowers now. Now with the flowers there is no right side left side because we go all the way around. So what I'm going to do is just pick an edge for each petal. Or pick two, two sides, whatever they may be, and just put this purple in there. Again, these are highlights. I'm not going to take over everything. We just want just a little bit there. So just do like a little corner and edge. kind of mixing with the paint really good there. So I'm just adding in just kind of a blending, just blending a little bit of that. 
There we go. Easy peasy. Now let's let's do some of this bright green. You guys should have some green or bright green with you. And we're gonna do just just the line. Just fill in the edge here. Ooh, that one's a little thick. I might come back and fix that one later. But if you got some really bright green, this is really nice to do on the wings as well, just because the colors work so well. I'm not trying to state that bees have green wings, but <laughs> it just works really well when you use these brighter colors in this environment. And let's take some of your orange and we're gonna make some, fill in those details just a little bit. Boink. And there you go. Pretty simple. Now we are gonna do some finishing touches coming up. Now with these finishing touches, I'm gonna first do the first, my most favorite thing is erase the chalk out of here. I can't tell you how important or crucial it is that please make sure your painting is dry before you move on to this step. If you have to take a blow dryer to it or a heat gun, whatever it is, just make sure it's dry. Um, this is one of the funnest parts though. If you get just a little bit of water on your washcloth or your paper towel, as long as it's dry, once you go over all these spots, all of those chalk marks disappear. And there's something very satisfying about that. It makes the, the painting come even more alive when you see all those construction lines just go away. There we go, beautiful. So add some finishing touches. The other things, once you're done with that, once you've got all that chalk off there, you can go back and look at, say maybe some of the black didn't come down on one of these sections as much as you would like it to. You can go back and fill in some more of that black or cover up any mistakes. I mean, black is a great way to cover up mistakes. If you did too much of the purple there, or there was too much green somewhere, um, you can take this black, just fill in any patchy holes so that none of that sunset color is coming through. There's just definitely a few spots on the, the beehive here that I can fix. Now one thing I'm not going to go fix is you see right there on the right hand side of this beehive, where right above the, the entryway or the, the hole in the beehive, that purple I went a little too far and overlapped that sunset area. I'm not going to try to fix that again. Because we did a nice gradient over that, I'm never going to be able to create that same yellow without doing a lot of work first. So I'm going to let art be art. I'm going to let that just stay as it is. Um, and unless I even pointed that out, I'm sure nobody even noticed it. So it's that easy there. Uh, I'm going to take some of this black and I'm going to go over um, some of the flowers like this area over here on the flower with the green. I went a little too crazy with that. I'm gonna probably go back and do some black over that. Add some more, just, you know, fill everything up. Make it clean it up, make it look nice. I definitely didn't like what I did with that branch there. I'm trying to fix it in the final details, but um, it's not coming out as nice as I wanted it to. So there you go. Even though it looks like a great painting, there are mistakes in it. And if you just embrace it, nobody will know. As long as you love it, that's really all that's important. There we go. See how that, that black line really thickened up, made that part of that painting pop a little better. I think I should probably add a little bit of green up on those leaves that we made where we had our happy accident. Let's do that. Let's let's put some green up here. There we go. Well, we got some grapes. It's a grape tree. I don't know. There's some leaves on that branch though. But see how easily if you get a little creative, you can fix any mistake. And there you go. Once you're finished with all of those details, you should have a beautiful work of art sitting in front of you. If you painted along with me and you had a lot of fun, let me know in the comments below. Tell me what you loved about it or what you would have done differently or did do differently. 
But while you're there, just don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share with your friends. Let us know that you're out there. Let the world know we're here. Thank you so much for watching the Isto James channel, and I will see you next time.